Right, good morning everybody. Hello and hi and welcome. This is Cliff Graves from Christian Tough Guy Show coming right at you. Now, today's subject What is asked for? And we're talking about spiritual principles now. Uh, we're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, <coughs> the bad and the ugly fall into the same remit. Um, and that's what we're going to deal with first. We're not going to be pulling any punches. Um, I sense there might be quite a number of people quite upset, maybe even offended by um, my opinions. Let me stress my opinions. Others as well, but um, just my learned opinion. Z, plural. I say this because I just desperately want to help, and I mean that. I'm not just—they're not just words. I, I really mean that. Really, really mean that. It's to do with the um, incessant rain that we've been having here in the UK. And some parts have been absolutely hit. Like you would never believe. I used to live about 8 to 10 miles from a place called Chertsey. I used to live, in fact, right by the, the, the River Thames, literally um, 100 metres or so from the, the River Thames uh, in a place called Sunbury. Uh, and you know, the, the, the situation with all the rivers flooding um, and then I watched today on the on the um, breakfast news just a few moments ago about Dawlish, um, where Dawlish Station railway station is out of commission and has been for several weeks now and will continue to be out for several weeks. And and I'm trying to look for the positive here. Um, because uh, yes we do have um, relations down in places like Lyme Regis, friends in Salkham, friends in Plymouth um, I know that they're being affected but it does affect the town the main transport point of the town Dawlish which is in fact the, the, the main um, train train route out from uh, um, one of the London railway stations right the way through um, to uh, Exeter so it's been taken out so kind of really you know Trains running through Dawlish are not. Um, you look at Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis is, if you've ever been there, it's one of the most cleanest, well maintained, and looked after uh, holiday resorts I think I've ever been to, ever. How you judge, um, I think, how clean and well maintained um, a holiday resort is in particular, or a town, or whatever, is by the, by the public toilets, don't you? You know, um, and, uh, and the pubs, and the restaurants, don't you? And all I can tell you is that no graffiti, um, immaculately clean 
and yet Lyme Regis has been hit hard. I was saying to you about Chertsey and, and Sunbury, um, the town completely taken out. Under about two feet, maybe more of water. The people blame, oh, it's the drains. Oh, the rivers should have been dredged. Etc, etc, etc. They, 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 they lay the blame, which actually, yes, the local community, the environment agency, yes, they should be right on it. Because if you look at places like in the Netherlands, but it just doesn't happen, does it? Why? Because they're clued in. Here, yeah, we're so dumb. And so almost retarded. You know? But, the point I am making for what we asked for, we got, basically. Um, this was aired, and I sat in absolute shock by none other than the Revelation TV. Um, and I take my hat off to them because they, they, they um, go to places where other ministries don't and that impresses me about them they're genuine there, the presenters there are genuine and they genuinely care but they showed um, a clip of the um, you remember we, we had the Olympics here didn't we just recently the closing ceremony Sorry, or was it the opening ceremony? Um, it doesn't really matter whether it was the closing, I can't remember. It doesn't matter whether it was the closing, closing ceremony or the opening. But it was the something to do with the Paralympics. And I had this chap there that obviously, nothing taken away from him, been told what to say, how to say it, and had practiced and rehearsed what he was going to say and how he was going to say it. Um, and they had this big book which would look like uh, a Bible that supposedly he was reading from. And it was a summoning up of occultic powers. Now, there might be some of you switching off now as, ah, you know, we shouldn't really be listening to a spiritual show, the Christian Tough Guy show, should you? Because I very, very, very much believe in uh, uh, spiritual powers, more so than physical and more so than mental. Um, uh, anyway, the, 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 this speaker was um, saying, and we call upon, you know, the so and so, so, I'm not even going to say the word, the so and so, so and so, to bring rain, to bring rain, you know. It was summoned up, and there was about I think over 170,000 people within this stadium listening in. All going, hooray, hooray, all that sort of thing in agreement. You know, people listening in on the TV. And yes, hooray, brilliant speech, brilliant speech. Now you see them. The same people are going, hooray, hooray, woohoo, brilliant speech, wow, fantastic. The ones that are st standing there with their, their, their mouths open, going, duh, um. 
What's happened here then? You summoned it up. That's what happened. You asked for the rain and now you've got it. Big time style. I'll tell you a personal experience with me. Before I was a Christian, okay, I was an occultist. I was searching, I was looking for the meaning of life, people. I, I, I was searching in all the wrong places. You listen to my testimonial, you'll, you'll understand more. But I was looking in all the wrong places. Getting involved in all the wrong things. Anyway, I done a um, similar thing to what this guy done, a spiritual rite in in my bedroom. And answer me this question, because I am not telling you any word of a lie here. I'm telling you absolute truth. You can either tr choose to believe me or disbelieve me. If you disbelieve me, you might as well just switch off now. If you believe me, then thank you for that, because I am telling the truth. I bought this um, candlestick from a very well-known department store in Kingston upon Thames. The biggest department store in Kingston upon Thames. Massive. That's got many 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 shops within its complex so you might know the one I'm, I'm talking about and it was sealed in its wrapping paper you know it's plastic seal and everything else um, just a plain yellow candle not scented candle or anything like that nothing alright nothing I summoned up, I don't know what, there you go, somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, getting into the occult, I lit this candle and within moments the whole of the room had gone jet black, the, the candle best, best described, the flame went about 8 to 9 inches high, I lit it and <laughs> that was the flame going and the jet black smoke engulfed the whole of the room so this summoning up does has got um, I don't like to use the word power because I'm not glorifying this at all but there is evil power there so you see when they say oh let there be rain you summoned it up. You summoned it up. Don't look glum and dumb on our TV screens when you summoned it up and stood in agreement. Well, that's the bad, and that's the ugly, and it is pretty ugly. But I'm afraid, in my opinion, that is largely to blame I'm very sorry however the good is if only people could appreciate the good that the power of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is extremely powerful if you go and you look in the Bible, it is absolutely when when Jesus was um, active within his ministry. You look at the Gospels and you see healing after healing after healing after healing after healing after healing. Again, you can choose whether you want to believe. 
or disbelieve? If you disbelieve, I'm very sorry that you disbelieve. If you think the Bible is make believe, I'm very sorry. You know, you've got a choice to continue to listen or just switch off. The Bible is a historical book. Wife again. Wife saying she's in. Arrived at work safely. The Bible is a historical book with historical count accounts. Just like we 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 know about King Herod being shot through the eye with a um, a bow and arrow. It's all there to prove out that the accounts are absolutely true and correct. Jesus healing the blind, the lame. When we look at modern day healings, again, you get the TV and media here, the secular TV and media here. They love to jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, you know, we're all mental cases and con men. How do you know? If you're listening to any reporters within the secular TV media, how do you know? You only presume and assume you don't know. So keep your mouth shut. Yes, we do have the bad apples within Christianity healing. But they normally are weeded out quicker than what they um, are able to carry on with. And we see it. Christian healings. And the point of this today is to tell you to start believing. Have some faith and start believing. Too many of you that aren't Christians, you think that Christianity is something, oh, do, do, you know, mustn't do this, but I can't help what experiences you've had in the past through your education system or whatever, with, with, um, which they claim to be a part of Christianity, and they're actually not. Because I don't believe that Jesus is is our saviour. They believe in, 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 in the motherhood. I, I can't help that if you've had those 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 experiences. All I can tell you is if you are searching for the meaning of life, it's staring you right in the face, and that is Christianity. That is a belief that Jesus died on the cross to save our, our sins and by grace by grace by that very act that act or that gift we're saved and if we can believe that we're saved because when you croak it when you die that's it too late to say oh I know the meaning of life now I know the meaning of life I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry too late gone you've had your chance you've got to do it now whilst you're alive just believe in our Saviour. Too many of you will believe that trash that you hear on, on the the, uh, the opening or the closing ceremony of the Paralympics. They go, I don't know what's happened now. It was summoned up and you agreed it. You stood there and agreed it. Nodding your head, yeah. That's what happened. Telling you that, that's what's happened here. I was quite disappointed to hear one of my uh, friends that I spoke to on the telephone yesterday talking about um, prayer and the power of prayer. And he says, I won't mention his name to embarrass the guy, but I thought, how off key are you? What a disappointment to hear that this. 
He said, if, if you're on top of a roof um, and the flood waters are rising, the roof of your house and the flood waters are rising, and you pray for a helicopter to come out of the sky and save you, and a boat comes along, is there, I mate, jump on this boat, quick, quick, the waters are rising, well, you've got a chance, quickly, get on this boat now, quick. Um, the guy missed the point. When you pray in, 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 in that analogy that he was using, you pray, Father God, I stand in faith that you'll get me out of this situation, Lord, in any way you can, Father God. Heavenly Father, I pray somehow, some way, you get me out of this situation, Lord. And I stand in faith, expecting a miracle, Lord. Thanking you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Amen. And a boat comes along, or somebody comes along in a canoe, or anything, I don't know. That's your answered prayer. But you don't put it into pigeonholes and say, Father God, I'm praying for a helicopter. Because there is foolhardy prayer. Do you get what I'm saying? So we just have to be wise. And understand. That what we ask for, we get. Specifically with spiritual principles like in prayer. I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. There is the good, the bad and the ugly with what you ask for. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, try asking for the good and see where it gets you. Okay, so thanks for listening everybody and uh, speak to you again soon. Bye for now.